today I am a little bit underprepared for my class. Teaching log six, I believe. Um, today I'm a little underprepared for class. Uh, my syllabus says that I'm gonna be going over audience awareness. And I kind of started talking about that in the previous class, which while they were um, going over letters and writing letters. So today I am kind of going to continue on writing letters. And I think I'm gonna refer to the second chapter of the book that I assigned them to read, uh, which is something about context is everything. Because when you, write a letter to someone um, you have to keep in mind that context is needed and um, that it is important for you to include details so I'm going to try to go over that today I have a little workshop in mind uh, where they read letters from first year writing professors uh, so it's like a dear student Here's a bunch of advice, sincerely, a professor. Um, I'm also gonna have them read an example of a, a letter to a peer that was in a previous edition of student publications. Um, I think this one is a letter to her, her dad on um, talking about garbology. I did, I'm also thinking of doing a workshop where the students, as a class, we write a letter to someone. So in this one, I'm thinking of using Jack and Rose from the Titanic. But I can start it off by saying, like, dear Rose, this, and just have each student write something on the board or say something that we can type up. Uh, and. That way we can see, well, my context is Rose from Titanic, but maybe someone took Rose from somewhere else. Um, so I'm interested to see that. And depending on how much time is left, I might just have them get into groups and kind of start brainstorming their, um, their letter to their peer. That way they know like, okay, this is what I need to write down. This is the information that I need to provide based off of talking to this person. Um, and then I'm just gonna let class end, depending. I'm hoping this will take time. I am, uh, like I said, I'm a little bit underprepared, but I do have a game plan. I will be starting them off with um, a little free write where I ask them, like, what is context? Why do we need context? And how does context change the way the story is perceived? Um, I'm gonna have those, them write that down and that way we can refer to that later in the lecture. So I'm gonna see how this goes because I'm not prepared today. Today I'm just like, I don't know where my head is. <laughs> but um, hopefully my students can help me out today and I don't know if I should be honest about not being ready. But I am trying to make the class fun and I am trying to have them benefit from this, so. I'll be back at the end of class to see if this worked or not. Um, be back in a moment. Teaching log six, part two. Uh, I just taught my class and it went really well. I had my students do a little free write for the first couple minutes while I was trying to open up the projector, uh, turn it on, get it all set up. It took a little longer than it should have. But um, I had them do a free write on context. Like, what is context? Why do we need it? How does context change a story? I just let them write. Uh, and uh, power up the computer to open up my Canvas page, pull up some sample letters, uh, even letters from first year uh, professors to first year students. I wanted to show them the first day of class, but. Right now, it seemed like a better time to do it, especially since I needed letters for an example. Um, after their free write, I gave them a little 
like had them tell me, like give me the answer. And I'm starting to notice that there's like three, maybe four students that keep answering uh, and volunteering. So that's good because I do have students that are um, actively engaging, but that's not good because they're, now all the other students are depending on them. Uh, I, they gave some really good ideas. I tried to talk about context and I did refer to the textbook because they should have read that already. And I told them like, if you don't know what context is, re review chapter two, cause you're gonna need it for your next exercise, which is due on Tuesday. Um, after that, I ended up talking about audience because context and audience go kind of hand in hand. And, um, this time around, I was like, okay, who's going to be your audience? Like, what kind of questions do you ask yourself to approach writing the, this letter? And I made a long list of these things. I took some pictures I might add to Canvas for my students, um, but they were all engaging enough. Um, then I went into the sample letter from, um, I don't remember who wrote it, but it was a sample letter using garbology as a text. So this was a perfect, perfect example for my students to read. I had the, them read it out loud, like taking turns. And I told them like, if you don't volunteer, I'm just gonna call on you. And I just called on people. And since no one seemed to volunteer, uh, I also pulled up the professors writing a letter to students, kind of giving them like, hey, you know, like I'm here, ask questions. I, I have to help you out. And one student uh, early during the exercise that I had them do asked me like, why are we doing like, how are we going to apply this to our essay? And I'm like, that's good. Uh, that's a good question because all of the elements that you're touching upon with this uh, exercise, like the first exercise was summary and analysis, just an overview. The second exercise is a, an analysis with the author basically. And the third exercise was a summary and analysis and your opinions to someone that doesn't know about this and you're just becoming aware of this but your ex your essay is going to use all of these elements um the exercise that i had them do took maybe a half hour but that's okay because it was fun i i was telling my students all right we're gonna write a letter as a class we're going to write a letter i can write it or i can type it and the student's like, oh, but your wrist, because I'm actually wearing a brace today. Uh, and I'm like, it's okay, like, as long as I can still, I can still write, it just hurts a bit. But I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna start it off. And I wrote, Dear Jack, from the Titanic. And the student, I, I just had the first student go, I'm like, all right, write. It's like, what do I write? I'm like, start it. Uh, like, how? And I'm like, you know that we're writing about Rose. Like Rose is writing about Jack. So we are Rose. You pick the time, the day, like you, it's your choice. This rest of the class, what you said, the rest of the class has to follow and has to work with it. And she's like, okay. And she started it off with meeting you was the best thing that has happened to me. And the following student never watched the Titanic, didn't know about it. So then he, uh, but the class tried to give him a little summary. And then he followed it up with, and me, and losing you was the worst thing. And then from there, I set the tone. And at one point I asked like, well, when are we writing this? Are we writing this right after he died? Are we writing this when she's old? Are we writing this when she, like I was asking them these questions. And then one thing, eventually the students started asking or integrating these ideas like, oh, after 84 years, I still think about you. And I think about this and I regret that. And I'm like, yes, this is what you need to consider. And throughout the time, it, the students were laughing. They were trying to give their own advice. Um, they were trying to make sure that, um, there it's cohesive it was and it wasn't it was because it's still talking about jack but it wasn't because they're not integrating anything else into it but seeing that it's just a small amount of students in a small not a small small class but I'm like it's just 18 students and there was nothing to not enough time to work on it um but it was fun and they loved it. I even asked them like, do you like this exercise? Cause I can try to make more of these exercises where we work as a class for this. And they're like, yes. 
because they were dying of laughter. And I'm like, okay. Um, and then I had about 10 minutes left and I told him, all right, take out a sheet of paper and start brainstorming your letter to, uh, to your peer. Who are you? Like ask you, make your list of the questions. Who are you writing the letter to? Why are you writing the letter to? How are you going to integrate it into your everyday life? Like how is Little Red Riding Hood's story changing your life? And they started working on that and then I let them go. I mean, last 10 minutes, you know, there's not much you can do. But I did tell them like, if you have questions, make sure you email me, make sure you contact me. And I think today was one of my most, like I was underprepared mentally, but obviously my students didn't realize that. And they realized that I can be approachable to an extent. Uh, like they can talk, come talk to me about random things. Like one student just asks me about the requirements. I'm like, well, it's on Canvas. Uh, make sure you pull up the prompt, but it should be like two to three pages, the, the length of the, of the next exercise. And another student like asked me like, oh, what happened to your wrist? Um, or another, like they're starting to ask more questions. And I think, I think I might, have an anonymous q a with my students that, that i can bring into a following class i don't know when yet but uh, i'm slowly trying to think of exercises that gets them more engaged because this one worked out really well everybody participated they had no choice of course but everybody contributed to the letter and in the end, someone's like, can I take a picture of it? I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna take a picture of it. I'm gonna post it on Canvas, you know? So I'm, I'm finally getting it. Like, I can't believe it. I'm finally getting it. It's still hard to realize that I'm standing in front of 20 students, lecturing, not lecturing, but teaching for 75 minutes and liking it because i get anxiety just presenting a 15 minute presentation that i have to do later today i get anxiety about that because i don't feel prepared for this but then teaching even if i'm not prepared it looks like i am i don't know this it's such a weird it's so weird but um that's the end of teaching log six uh, I might have to do a teaching log during the weekend because I have two piles of papers to grade. Uh, I have um, summary and analysis exercise one, and then I have letter to the author exercise two. And I briefly looked through them and I can see that some of them did not meet their page requirement and they're not gonna get full points. And I feel bad about that, but the prompts has requirements and hopefully they take this as a learning lesson. Also, I noticed that one of my students didn't turn in exercise one and she was absent for X today. So I don't know if she dropped the class or not. I checked my roster before I went to class and she's still enrolled. So I guess I'll find out next class and uh, I'm gonna see what's happening. I might have to shoot her an email like, hey, like, is everything okay? I don't, I mean, I'm not the, her mom. I don't need to baby her. I don't know. End of log six, uh, until log seven, ta-ta for now.